you kind of want to outrun your opponents by infesting them. You don't want to be the one stuck with all the nasty cockroaches inside of your apartment. <laughs> Hey guys, and welcome back to another Unfiltered Gamer board game review, and today's game up on the tabletop is called Cuddly Cockroaches by Naked King Studios. It plays two to five players, it takes about 35 minutes to play, and it's for ages 10 and up, and in the game Cuddly Cockroaches. Well, this game was kind of imagined during the pandemic in which basically a husband and wife team were kind of stuck in their apartment, and the story goes that basically as things got worse, the uh, cockroaches started piling in and infesting, and they decided to make a game about their experiences with these cuddly critters and so you are participating in it as well you'll be taking a little apartment as well as your neighbors where tenants around you are also going to get their own little apartment and cockroaches are going to start infesting into your apartment you'll be trying to get rid of them by passing them along to your their neighbor neighbors trying to exterminate them and utilizing supply cards to get rid of them now this game plays a little bit like bullets and teeth but instead of zombies and werebears you're dealing with a ton of different types of cockroaches will you be able to survive the infestation and keep yourself under 10 cockroach points and infest your neighbors or will you get overrun and removed from the game let's take a look down below I'll show you what comes in the game how it plays and whether or not you should pick up this cute little cuddly cockroach game cute little cuddly cockroach game anyway down below here is what is included with cuddly cockroaches every single player is going to get their own unique apartment building which is going to be color coded yellow purple blue green and red give each player one of these guys here as well as there are two different decks you're going to have the cockroach deck which will have a different type of cockroach in them whether it be a basic cockroach with a number on the top right a green one which is like a passive ability and then these yellow ones here which are negatives that will affect you throughout the game before you play actions. You're also going to be getting a supply deck here. These are going to typically give you either events or actions that will go throughout the game. You'll be playing these to remove cockroaches from yourself, give them to your opponents, or you'll be able to use them to draw additional cards or gain bonus actions and whatnot. This is going to be a player reference card. It tells you how to play the game fairly easily as well as the setup and of course what you can do on your turn and it's very very useful and every player will get one of these guys both front and back and of course the play immediately cockroach card to set up the game it's pretty simple you're going to take this to cockroach deck here you're going to shuffle it you're going to cut it in half take the bottom half of the deck put the play immediately card in it shuffle it up and then place it on the bottom of the deck make sure the die are in reach of all players and of course make sure that the supply deck is shuffled as well then you're going to go ahead and deal out three supply cards to each player so we'll go ahead and set aside three of these mats i'll just show you two players and I will then go ahead and give out each player what they need. And what they need, you're going to need is three supply cards. So one, two, three for one player, one, two, three for the other player. Make sure that these guys are set here and then give each player one of their little player reference cards. So they know what they need to do on their turn. Then go ahead and set aside those. You won't be needing them as well. After that, then you're going to start by picking a player who most recently saw a cockroach, owned a cockroach, or had some type of experience with a cockroach. And in this case here, we'll go ahead and say that it is purple. And to begin the game, it's rather simple. You're going to go ahead and take a top card from the cockroach deck and put it in the apartment. From there, you're going to check to see if the cockroach has any abilities. This one does not. Check to see the number of the cockroach, which in this case is one. And then that player is going to go ahead and take their actions if there are no cockroaches with unique abilities that force them to do anything. And in this case here, he's got three different cards. He's got bug powder, he's got cup of sugar, and inner peace. Things that can turn the numbers of cockroaches into ones. Uh, picking a neighbor, and you can take a number of roaches from them, as well as supply cards. Or discard any number of supply cards, and then kill that many cockroaches in your building. And in this case here, he's going to go ahead and oh, do none of the above. He's going to go ahead and keep these cards. Now, another action you can choose to do, instead of playing a card from his hand, or her hand, like you can go ahead and choose to infest a neighbor. Infesting a neighbor is pretty simple. You choose any number of cockroaches, you 
take a die. You roll that die, and if you get higher than the number associated with those cockroaches cumulatively, you'll move the cockroaches. And if you don't, like in this case, I rolled a one for a one, you'll keep the cockroaches. If this case, let's say that I chose this cockroach, I chose this player, and I rolled a five, that would be higher than one, which would move this cockroach over to this player here. And then this player is going to go ahead and draw a supply card as long as they have less than five cards in their hand. The last action you could choose to do is shuffle your hand, all these guys here, into the supply deck, and then draw three new supply cards. This player has four, though, and they're pretty happy with what they have, so they'll go ahead and keep those cards. You can take two actions on your turn, and if you don't want to take any other actions, you could probably simply choose to, oh, I don't know, play a supply card that you may not need, or you can shuffle these back in, but you have to play your actions in the game. Then, after that, you'll pass. So in this case, let's say he doesn't have any cockroaches, he can't infest, he doesn't have any supply cards he can play, he'll basically choose to take these, shuffle them into the supply supply deck and then draw three new supply cards, which may be better than the previous ones he or she had. Then it'll go to the next player's turn. Next player is going to A, draw a cockroach, B, check to see if there's any abilities, and then C, play two actions, whether it be infesting, whether it be playing supply cards, or shuffling their hand into their deck. At the end of each player's turn, they're going to check to make sure they have less than the number 10 cumulatively among their cockroaches. And in this case, he's got three, and if he ended his turn now, he'd be fine. But if this player, for some reason, had something like, oh, I don't know, this in play, and at the end of their turn they ended, they would be removed from the game. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven points. If they ended their turn here, this player would be eliminated from the game because they have more than ten points, or ten or more points, in their apartments. They're always trying to get rid of cockroaches the best they can. When you move cockroaches, you're simply going to be moving them from area to area, and when you exterminate them, you're going to remove them from the game by putting them into the basement. The basement is actually going to be the bottom of the box. You go ahead and take this, get these guys here and put them in there. That's where they're going to go to die. Uh, the last little thing I need to tell you is that in this cockroach deck, there is a play immediately card. that's going to be in the bottom half of the deck somewhere. This will basically let you shuffle all the basement cockroaches and put them into the deck and give everybody two cockroaches, making the game start winding up. There's always going to be cards that will shuffle both decks and basically allowing them to continue playing the game. You're not going to just simply shuffle them when you run out. There's cards that will do that for you. And of course, there's extra die because certain cards will let you more, roll more than one die, which can push more cockroaches to your neighbors. That's pretty much the idea of the game Cuddly Cockroaches. Let's come up and discuss the game, tell you what I think about it, whether or not you should pick up this lovely little infestation game. Much like the game Bullets and Teeth, you kind of want to outrun your opponents by infesting them. You don't want to be the one stuck with all the nasty cockroaches inside of your apartment. And in order to do so, you're going to need to use tactics like supply cards and infestation. And infestation is pretty nice. You get to roll die, and if you roll high enough, you can actually push your cockroaches from yourself to somebody else. This game has a lot of twists and turns. It's a deeply take that game in a lot of ways, but it also has a lot of strategy based on die rolling, which, you know, it does have a certain amount of luck, but because there are certain cards that you can kind of increase your die count, or there's certain cockroaches that change the way in which you're going to be rolling the die and which ones you want to choose to send over, that will make a big difference in the game. And I'll go ahead and discuss them with some of the cockroaches that I have here that I thought were interesting. First of all, there's one that's like literally a literal rat. <laughs> Before your actions, you can kill a roach in your apartment, but he does have a value of four. So he's kind of not great to keep, but he's also not bad to keep either because he can get rid of roaches in your apartment. You got the Eldritch Roach. This one here lets you have an additional action. Um, oh, sorry, an additional die to each of your die rolls, but he's also a five. So with just these two alone, that's nine points, which you can kick you out of the game if you get one more. How about La Cucaracha? Before your first action, trade him with a roach from your neighbor's apartment. There's Munseer Roach. Uh, anytime you draw a supply card, you can draw that many plus one. So if you shuffle your supplies back in and you draw three new ones, you'll get to draw additional cards up to five. The Baby Roach. You can't infest with him. He's stuck with you unless you're able to destroy him. Uh, he's only worth one, so he's not super nasty, but they start piling up after a while. The Kawaii Roach, he's only worth one. He's super cute, and of course, he adds more roaches to your apartment than just the single one that always gets added when you have him in front of you. And the Boss Roach, he basically turns all of your roaches into non 
action roaches, roaches that don't that have passive and active abilities, those are gone and they're all turned into twos. So all your ones become twos, all your threes become twos. He's kind of useful in certain situations and in other situations he can be very detrimental. Some supply cards as well. First of all, you're gonna have this inner peace one. It makes all your roaches one until your next turn. So if you have, I don't know, six roaches that are all threes, he can actually keep you alive for a single turn so that you have an extra action or extra two actions to deal with them on your next turn if somebody else doesn't already. How about kill a roach and get a roach? So if you have a really big scary roach in front of you, you can hopefully get rid of that one and get a new one that's worth less. Uh, open door policy, each neighbor picks up a roach card. So if you wanna be a little more aggressive and you have less roaches in front of you, you can kind of start sending them off to your friends. Cleaning lady, until the end of your turn, add an additional die to each of your die rolls. With this one and with the other roach, that lets you roll three die total, which can let you throw a lot of roaches at players. And then, of course, the main action cards in the game, the event cards, these guys will let you reshuffle the supply deck. It says pick a neighbor. They, put up to, they pick up to three roach cards. It's devastating for them. And then you shuffle this card and the discard pile back into the supply deck. So there's a lot of things going on in the game. You get the two actions and you can choose between the three different things you want to do, which makes it very simple and easy to play. But how you choose and what you choose and when you choose to take actions and what roaches you pick is going to make a big difference in this game, keeping you from being totally infested. Uh, this game has this interesting notion of you kind of want certain roaches at certain times and you don't want others. They're going to be beneficial but painful or they're going to be not so great but they're not so strong and so deciding when and what roaches to get rid of is kind of a task all on its own you are definitely trying to keep yourself stable but you're also trying to destabilize the people in the other apartment uh areas in your building to try and minimize the problem. Maybe if the fumigators come and deal with them, they'll come and deal with you for free or something. I don't know. Maybe that's the idea. Or maybe just you want to put as much stress and pain on them as you possibly can and worry less about yourself. This game is also twisty turning. You might think you're winning at one point when all of a sudden the next round comes along and you've got 13 points of roaches to deal with and you need to get down to at least nine in order to not be unsuccessful in surviving. Uh, it's got player elimination, which is probably a negative for most people, in which case when you have too many roaches, you are going to be removed from the game. Generally speaking, when that happens, most people have a lot of roaches and the game typically will end shortly thereafter. So it's not that bad, but I can see why people wouldn't like the idea of not being able to play after they've been removed and there's still three, four or five, or even yeah, three or four extra players still playing the game. And that is something that does happen in this game. I played my last game and I was out for like five or six minutes while everybody else was playing and I was kind of watching because I got overrun rather quickly. But like I said, it's a quick game. So probably one of the main negatives to it. Also, of course, it's a take that game with luck. Rolling the die might result in you rolling one every single time. It's possible, it's unlikely, but you can mitigate that with roaches and supply cards. So it does have that factor in it, but it is deeply mitigated with utilizing strategy. Choosing the best roaches and whatnot is important. There's a heavy amount of strategy for the take that game, in my opinion, for this one. I really, really like bullets and teeth and the idea of having to always kick your friends in the shins so they're not able to run fast faster than you are to escape the zombies because typically the zombies are eventually going to overrun you. This is the case as well with this game. Eventually you're just not going to be able to deal with the roaches that are on the field as far as destroying them and you're going to need to send them off in hopes that your opponents will get eliminated before yourself. The cockroaches are rather cute. They have some unique different names on them. They have some uh, Fun little uh, gestures in regards to like the boss roach or the kawaii roach. He's not so, he's, he's cute and he's sweet and he doesn't do much, but he brings more roaches to the farm and sending them off is really important because you don't want to deal with those guys. And then of course you get the big fat scary roaches, especially like this eldritch roach, which gives you a great benefit, but at a great detriment to by holding it. This game is going to be very fit for families. It's a good party game. It's something that you can play as a filler in between other games. And we were playing this game, especially last night, we were playing this game multiple times over and over again because people wanted to get back in and jump in. Once they got eliminated, they're like, oh, I want to do this thing. And now I understand you get better with the more times you play. And of course, the replayability factors in with the different types of roaches and cards you have in your hands because there is a large amount of different types of cards you can utilize and the combinations are exponential. Anyway, that's my review for the Cuddly Cockroach game. If you're interested in taking a look at the game, check the link down below in the description. You can go ahead and pick this game up on Kickstarter. All right, 
outro. Thank you guys for watching another unfiltered gamer board game review. If you like this video, check out the rest of our videos here on YouTube. Like, subscribe, and comment. Hit that notification bell button. It does help us out tremendously, and we do greatly appreciate it when you do. So you can see more videos just like this one. Speaking about games like this one, our live stream every Wednesday, 6.30 p.m. PST. We're going to be upgrading our live streams to where we're going to be doing OBS and a bunch of cameras. So I hope you guys join us so you can see games played like this one on the stream, as well as we do giveaways. I think we're giving away mats. So we're giving away some stuff by Ultra Pro. So a lot of cool stuff you can win on the giveaway stream and we'd like to have you join up as well as of course our discord if you're interested in doing patreon any of that kind of stuff it greatly helps us all linked down below in the description all right guys thank you so much for watching and as always i hope you do not get infested by even the most cuddly of cockroaches next time